last part of our personal narrative, which is called the ending. Boys and girls, to review what we've learned about a personal narrative, I'm going to play a game with you called Finish the Word. So I'm going to give you a sentence with a word at the end, and I want you to try and figure out what word that is, okay? So a personal narrative is a true st. What word would that be? Good job. It's a true story. How about when you write a personal narrative, it is about an experience that happened in your l What word would that be? Awesome. That's life. How about it has sequential order with the beginning, the middle, and the What comes here? The end. Um, how about this one? The beginning of a personal narrative tells important information like who, what, when, and where. Good work. And our last one, the middle of a personal narrative tells more about what happened and uses temporal words like first, then, and fine. Finally. Awesome work. We're going to review something new today, which is what to put at the end. This is one of the last parts of our personal narrative that we are going to talk about, and that is the ending. And when we write an ending for a personal narrative, we can do it in one of three ways here. So we could show a feeling where we say, it was the happiest day of my life. We can show that there is hope in our ending by saying, I hope I find another spider. Or we can give an action such as, I snuggled into bed. Let's go ahead and watch Miss Chapman act out a few of these endings next. At the end of the story, Bubbles, a boy popped in a boy's, a bubble popped in a boy's face and he couldn't stop laughing. This ending shows how the boy is feeling. At the end of the story, Bath Time, a dog jumped out of the tub and ran off. The boy hoped his dog would let him give him a bath again. The end shares a feeling of hope. At the end of the story, A Bad Day, a sick little girl went back home and slept and slept. This story shows an action. So watch me as I find the parts of this personal narrative. I'm going to put a green box around the beginning of the story and circle the who, what, when, and where. So here's my green box. That's the beginning. I know it's the beginning because there's a paragraph starter there. So I know that who is in the story is the friend and I. So I'm going to circle that. I know what they are doing. It says one day my friend and I went to the beach to play. So what are they doing? They are playing at the beach, right? Um, when is it? When did it happen? One day. And where is it? Do you know where? That's right, the beach. So we have all those things, the who, what, when, and where circled in the first paragraph. Now I'm going to go to the middle and I'm going to use a yellow color to put around my middle. And it says to circle all the temporal words or the transition words. So I'm going to go ahead and circle this word first because I know that's one of them. First we jumped into the warm water and swam around. Suddenly is one. Suddenly my friend stuck his hand out of the water like a shark spin. He chased me and I screamed, ah, then I swam away as fast as I could. So those temporal words or transition words movie from sentence to sentence. And then lastly, I am going to put a red box around the end of the story here. And I am going to um, figure out how did they use an action, a feeling, or hope. So I tumbled onto the sand. I was so happy to be safe. So they tumbled. They kind of did too. They tumbled and then they also are happy. So they did an action and they're telling how they feel. So you get to go ahead and do this in your activity too. At the end of the story.